about a giant killer, we got to talk about King David. Come on, somebody. This is a story that most people don't like to tell. See, we like to tell about Mike Tyson winning the fight. That's why you hear about King David cutting the giant's head off. But not many people know about this verse. Where David had grown tired. Well, he was tired of Titan, Jeremy. He was sick and tired. And every time I turn around, there's a devil showing up. Every time I get ahead, there's another devil. And David got to the place, I'm tired of fighting. David is in his room. He just came back from war. Man of God, he ain't even got the blood washed off of him yet. His shield's laying there, his sword's laying there, and Pastor David, they run in and say, David, there's another fight coming our way. I know you're tired, but the enemy's moving in. I can only see David picking his shield up. I can only see him picking his sword up. And God be for me. And what devil in hell can stand against me? But even giant killers get tired. And men of God, I know right now you're tired. And I know you want to change. And I know you want to change because you're in the place called Hope Center. Amen. Amen. And we serve the God that gives hope where there is no hope. 2 Samuel verse 20, chapter 21 verse 15 the Bible reads when the Philistines were at war again at war again with Israel David and his men that were with him they went down and fought against the Philistines again and David grew faint. If you read the Bible and you study it out, you would understand that David, in fact, walks out into a battlefield, wore out, tired, busted, and disgusted, and he shows up on the battlefield ready to fight again. See, soldiers, that's all you know to do is fight, but God's going to show you a different way to fight. He's going to teach you, be still and know that I'm God. I'll dispatch angels down there to where you at. There ain't a devil that can stand in front of Almighty God. David goes on the battlefield, and there's a cousin of Goliath, and he's got his eyes on David. There he is. The one that killed my cousin. The one that took my dreams. The one that killed my family. He wants a war. I'm going to give David war. And he's fighting to get to David. And David is being David. He is slaying them left and right. But the giant killer now, Miss Brittany, he's tired. And the Bible says the giant killer, Pastor Jeremy, faints on the battlefield. I mean, if I'm going to fall out, I don't want to fall out in the middle of a war. Amen? Amen. Right. David faints. And I asked you this because I want you to understand what you surround yourself with. The Bible says, bad company. When you leave here, it's up to you who you surround yourself with. If you go back to where you came from, don't expect no different results. They ain't our homeboys. They didn't send us oodles and noodles in prison, did they? They don't write you when you get there, do they? How many send a postcard down here to say, I'm proud of you, keep going forward. Nah. Today I want you to make up your mind who you're going to surround yourself with, men of God, when you leave here. See, King David made up his mind. I need soldiers with me. I need one with me, not just when I'm on top of a mountain, but I need one with me when I'm down in the valley and I can't stand up. David thanks. And the giant sees him. I got him now. Man of God, that giant made a beeline toward David. Whoa! I got him! I'm going to stick a sword right through him while he's laying on the ground. And as he approaches David, David's man killed the giant for David. See, most times we don't tell these stories. But this is God's grace. You hear what I'm saying to you? Giant killers in the house of God today. First thing God wants to give you, who are you surrounded by? The old way wouldn't work it. Come on. 
Right now, you got an opportunity to make a new army. I see generals in this place. I see talent. I see leaders. God is raising up a real army. They ain't got suits and ties on. They got tattoos. They got felony charges. God said, I'm tired of pink panty wearing, suit wearing. I'm tired of it. I need some boys that know how to get out of the ditch, that know how to fight, that is sick and tired. Oh, you want rough? Raw this. I didn't come to tickle ears. I came to give you the gospel of Jesus Christ. If he saved a drug addict like me and changed my life, my wife right there, stand up, honey, just for one minute. See, Jason, I'm going to kill you. Hallelujah. See, God will even blind a woman's eyes and give you a beautiful wife, give you beautiful kids. You're talking about a seven-time felon right here. God's give me a church, give me a family, lived in card, lived in crack houses. I lived in it all. And I said, how can you save me? And you know what? I would grow tired. Because, man of God, I didn't understand your Jesus. All I got to do is take Jesus and Jeremy, everything's better. I said, man, I ain't never seen Jesus on this side of town where I come from. I'm on the other side of eight mile. I ain't never seen him. I just wasn't looking, men of God. See, the devil will blind you. The devil will blind you where you can't see. And drugs, that's what they do. They blind us. They numb us. A little bit of sin. That's all you got to do is open the window and let a little bit of sin in. The devil will put your back in the back of the trunk and take you straight to hell. Yes. You got to make up your mind when you get out of here. It ain't just another joint. It ain't nothing just another blunt. It ain't just another Percocet. It ain't just another Xanax. No, your life depends on it. You need to hear me. Yeah. Oh, I know it ain't popular, but I didn't come to get your boat. I came to see somebody get set free. Amen. Because, see, I, I, had to, I didn't have the opportunity you had. I got a man of God to come in a prison cell with me. And he began to give me the truth. See, when the truth meets your lie, you got to make a decision. Come, yeah. on. There it is. Come on, somebody. Talk to it now. you got to make your decision. And today, the truth is here. Amen. Why? Because my daddy's in this place right now. Amen. The Bible says who the son sets free. free indeed. I can only see David broke down, busted, and disgusted. And then God began to give me this message, and I want to give it to you today. When the journey gets too hard, too, hard, too rough. When the journey has gotten too rough. Anybody know about that? Yeah. When life gets so hard where you just feel like, what am I getting out of bed for? I'm so tired. Why am I even continuing to go on for? The journey's too rough. I can't take it no more. You may feel like you're in that place right now. The journey's gotten rough. I don't see nothing changing. Well, the Bible says it's in due time, but don't lose hope. Don't lose hope because in due season, if you'll keep reaping good things, you hear me? Then you'll sow the good and reap the good. But you got to make up your mind today, man. Okay. I'm going to try Jesus. Not just a little bit, but I'm talking about sold out. Yeah. Where every decision that I make depends on him. Right. Man, I can't even go to Walmart without him. Yeah. Come on. Part of 7 Eleven. Hallelujah. You've been there looking at a Budweiser and they snuck in your truck. And the devil in the back told me it's just a drink. It's legal. It's legal. Come on, man. When the journey gets too rough, I want to show you four signs that the journey has gotten too hard on you. Number one, when the enemy you had under your feet is now in your head. When the journey gets too rough, You'll know it because the first indication is this. The enemy that we used to have under our feet is now in your head. He begins to remind you of your past, remind you of what you could have, should have, would have done. Ah, uh, you missed it now. It's too late. You're 40. You can't go back. The devil is a lie. Come on. My God has a way of catapulting you to the front. Come on, somebody. Hey, come on. That's right. Elijah, a mighty man of God. How many of you know the story of Elijah? The man that called down fire from heaven. Yeah, yeah, come on. I can only imagine. Can you imagine? Boy, I don't. that's why God don't let me do that, man of God. Because I do it right now. David, I, I put on a show right here. Yeah. I say, Lord, yeah. bring down fire. Yeah. And everybody be like, whoa. The guy said, you can't get that because all oh, yeah. glory belongs to me, Jason. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's right. All glory belongs to him. If you knew me, I can't even tie my shoes. This ain't Jason. This is just the spirit of a living God. I had to get out of the way and say, God, take over. Yes. My brothers and sisters, they depend on it. Brothers and sisters, you hear me. I'm tired of burying y'all. Yeah. I'm tired of burying you. 
Come on. I'm the one they call because you ain't got no preachers. I'm the one they call because they don't have no preachers because they see the bread is in the house of God. Mm. And if you ain't got no bread in your stomach, that's because you ain't been in the house of God. Wow. And the house of God just ain't where you keep the bread. You got to eat it at home. Yeah. It starts at home before it ever starts at church. Exactly. When the journey's too hard, number one, the enemy you had under your feet is now in your head. Elijah called down fire from heaven. Then he got a bad report. Jezebel's on the way. She's going to kill you. You know how the devil been telling he's going to kill us, man of God, for a long time? Well, brother, he should have finished this off a long time ago because hell's got trouble because we loose. You hear me? We loose now. Elijah, that says that the great man of God, the one that called down fire from heaven, man of God, he gets a report from some little girl that she's in charge of this king's. They don't even know how to run his own household. Hallelujah. We'll leave that there. But anyway, he gets a report and says, I'm going to kill you before the sun sets, buddy. This man takes off running. The man that called down fire from heaven, the man that called and told God, don't let it rain. And rain stopped. It didn't start back until he told it to. That's who I'm talking about here. Yeah. Now you tell me if the enemy that he had under his feet, I'll prove to you it got in his head. Because the same man of God that did those things found himself up under a tree, a broom tree, the Bible says. And he asked God, can you just kill me? This journey is too hard. I've had enough. I don't know how to get free from drugs. I don't know how to get free. If I could get free, God, I'd done been free. I told myself that over and over with heroin. God, if I wish you could take this heroin from me, I wish that I didn't have to live like this. God said, give it to me, Jason. I can't. I don't know how. And even when I want to, I still take it back. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the soldiers? They don't know what you go through because they ain't never put them shoes on. Right now. And thank God they hadn't. Right. And don't look at them like they last day and you look at them and say, I salute you. For not making the stupid choices that I make. Yeah. Our choices today are going to reflect on our kids. Yeah. That's right. You got kids, let me see some hands. That is, they're dependent on you. They're dependent on you. The cycle has to break. And you got to be the one to break it. Why? Because God created you for it. He's putting soldiers, man, of God. He's putting men like me and you. You hear me? Like us, brother. He's putting them together. And God is moving. Number two, I want to show you this. You'll know the journey's gotten too hard. When you want to hide from the enemy yeah. instead of facing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shameful thing to walk in front of your family and say, I have no control over this. Right. But freedom is in your words. Life and death is in your words. Amen. See, it's a prideful man that don't want to say, I need help, man. See, I thought I could do it on my own, and I know I got a many brothers in here right now that can testify. We thought we could wing ourselves off. That didn't work. We thought that we could monitor it, and we could. And it, matter of fact, bro, I'm gonna switch for the heroin. I'm just gonna go to cocaine. <laughs> I, well, cocaine ain't working. Heroin ain't working. I'm gonna take Xanax to go to sleep for a couple weeks, and then I'm gonna wake up. Hallelujah! That didn't work. I woke up still feeling. Yeah. Yep. Probably silent now. All right, now let's check it out, y'all. That's why it works for you. Hallelujah! I'm used to it. Then it gets to the place where you're like, Jeremy, I, like, I, the heroin, man, that's the devil, and I understand, but everybody smoke weed. Yeah. Yeah. Heck, they legalizing it. Well, if they legalize that, that uh, they legalize in gay marriages too, but you don't want me to talk about that, do you? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, I didn't come to make friends. I came to give you the word of God. Yeah. yeah. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah. Yeah. When you leave this place, you ain't never got to come back unless you come back to be a leader, to come back to be somebody that praying hope back into this God place. That's what God needs. You hear me? Yeah. First time I went into the penitentiary without handcuffs on to preach, you were the scene. My old cellmate was still sitting in there. I walked in, he rubbed his eyes. I said, yeah, that's me. I told you, God. <laughs> they gave you 25 years, brother. I said, I told you, but God. Yeah. Um, God don't share his glory, men of God. All women of God. God has got a message. I don't care if the family's here. He's got a message for you too. Because we all got problems. Some of us, you know how to cover them up better. Number three. You'll know the journey's gotten too rough. When you want to sit down 
and not get back up. See, it happened when Elijah sit down up under a tree. If you want to read all this, read 2 Kings chapter 19 to tell you all about it. You'll, you'll see where the man of God went to sitting up under a tree till he laid down up under the tree. And then he told God, he said, God, just kill me. The enemy's in your head and the enemy's trying to take your family. He's trying to take your life. Boys, you can't even smoke weed no more. They got fentanyl in that too. There ain't nothing out there for you but Jesus. Every bottle that I've ever got a hold of, every pill bottle, every bag that I've ever touched, every bag of cocaine, heroin, you name it, every one of them, all it done, all I kept doing was searching. Yeah. Searching. Yeah. And I want you to know there's no peace that can be given to you except through Jesus Christ. Amen. He'll return your sleep. He'll return everything the devil stole yeah. from you. But it's up to you. The Bible says it like this. Choose this day who you'll serve. Amen. And see, sometimes we might be in a place like this. Stop, I, I, come on now. I know how it is. This happens in churches. They're halfway committed. Yeah. Do you know what halfway committed gets you? None of God. God don't want 99.9% .9 of you. He wants all of you and none of you. Read your Bible. You'll know the journey has gotten too hard when you want to sit down and give up. And there may be some men in here right now saying, this is my last straw and I feel like giving up. I, I, and that's the devil wanting you to quit. He's wanting you to quit on your family. Somebody loves you. Somebody cares for you. If you were like me, I grew up as an orphan. And, and I felt nobody loved me. But I found out the Father's love. And I understood something. There's a God in heaven that loves me. There's a God in heaven that don't treat me as my sins deserve. There's a God in heaven that can restore everything that I burned down. The devil lied to you. You ever heard him say, if you burn that bridge down, you can't cross it again? That's a good thing when you got Jesus because he walks across water. Somebody shout Jesus in the house of God. Number four, when you tell yourself, I'd rather be dead than alive. How many of you can testify to that? Come on, somebody. That is the enemy trying to destroy you because he understands what's inside of you. Amen. The problem is you don't understand. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is you don't know who you are. You don't understand how powerful you are. See, man of God, you got to go in the room. I used to tell the men in prison when I go in there every Thursday, and I go over there to preach and I tell them this. Men of God, when you go back to your prayer block, listen, because I asked them, where are you going to? Going back to the cell, preacher. I said, that ain't your cell. I want you to turn your thinking around. Come on. It's your perspective is wrong. Amen. That ain't your prayer. That ain't your cell block. You, that is your prayer hole. They locked you in with Jesus, boy. Hey. That is your prayer spot. Go on back to the prayer room, baby, and tell them they didn't lock me in with Jesus and pull up and lay up on his lap and let God do his work. I tell everybody, if the God that I serve, the God that I serve has the keys to hell and any jail. So when you get to that room, I tell them this. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. And it's for all of us. See, our, our identity is, is jacked up. Your identity is what Facebook's got, and what they look like, or what your aunt's doing. She's a doctor and I'm not. Who cares? <laughs> I'm not her. Period. That's good. Go back to your room tonight. Your prayer room. And I want you to get that mirror. I want you to look straight in it. See, I don't know about you, but there was a time I hated looking in the mirror. Mm. I seen the piece of crap that I was. I seen the daddy that I wouldn't. I seen the son that I wished I could have been. And then the devil reminded me of everything that I did or didn't do. Until God changed my eyes. I had to lay my hands on my eyes like this, men of God. And I said, God, give me eyes to see the way you see me because all I see is trash. I feel like giving up. I feel like I feel like blowing my brains out. God, I don't want to go home. Anybody know about real spiritual warfare? Yeah. And I began to pray. And I said, God, let me see me the way you see me. And let me see people the way you see yeah. them. Amen. Amen. You remember Jesus? He said, hold on now. Forgive them for what they're not doing. God, what are you? Oh, I say, pray for your enemies. Love them. See, many of you, if you got enemies, you got a messed up way of thinking. Right now, what your prayer should be is, God, let me see out of your eyes. Let me have your heart. Let me feel the way you feel. Let me see the way you see. Let me see. Let me see me the way you see me. Yeah. I don't see the apple of your eye. 
I don't see a leader. I see a drug addict, Lord. I see this. I see that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yes, amen. Man, the devil lying to you. The devil wouldn't be so concerned with you if he knew what God had planned for you. Do you hear me? The devil still knows the plans of God. How do you say that, Pastor? Because if you remember through your Bible, he fell from heaven. He had everything. God don't take gifts back. That's why you got to watch preaching these days. When a preacher yeah. says something, get Thank your Bible, you check him out, out, test it out. Exactly. Don't check any man and just believe him. I don't care what platform he's got. Amen. You check that word of God because that's the undefilable word. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Mm. I always hated when preachers would give me four things that I could identify with. And I'd be like, yeah, check, check, check. I'm all them bad things. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but do you got a checklist that I can go do to help me out? Or you just bring me to church to stab me. <laughs> I'm not that preacher. I didn't come to beat on no sheep. So I want to give you four things you're going to need on this journey. Because, man of God, you got a journey ahead of you. When you leave here, you got choices, man of God. Choices are waiting on you. Yeah. And how many of you know, like I know, one choice can cost you everything? Yeah. Come on. Been sitting in the penitentiary with beside boys, and all they did was get in the wrong car. Didn't even do nothing, sir. He's just in the wrong car. Because that was his home, boys. Didn't tell him that was a kilo of cocaine in the back. When the police come, you ain't got no friends. They all your friends till they come. Then they sit into a prison cell and said, I shouldn't have gotten that car. I've been in there with them and said, I got angry, man. I got angry. And I pulled the gun and one second of life was gone. If I could just have a point two of a second back preacher, I would have never put my hands on that gun. God has stopped time for you today, ladies and gentlemen, for you to make up your mind. The journey now that you are getting ready to walk on, it is full of choices. You will need this on your journey when the journey is too great. The Bible says that when Elijah had fell down and got up under this tree, he climbed up in an old cave somewhere. You know you're in trouble when, you, when the darkness seems to be peace. He climbed up in an old cave, David, and he, and he laid down up in there and he just wanted to die inside this cave. And the Bible says that an angel came and visited Elijah. Number one thing that you'll need on your journey when it's too great, it's a visit from heaven. Yeah. Pastor, how in the world I get a visit from heaven? <laughs> the Bible says you call him, he'll come. Right. See, God is like the wind. You don't see it. Sometimes, but you can hear it. See, you'll hear it through men and women of God. You'll hear it through your family. Come to church, change. You don't have to live like... That's God's people speaking to you. You're better than these drugs. When they see better than you than you see in yourself, that's the right kind of people you need to be around. If they ain't picking you up, you don't need around them. Got enough of them kicking us down, amen? amen. Pick new friends. Number one, if you want to, if you want, when your journey's too great, number one, when your journey's too great, you'll need this a visit from heaven. And all you gotta do is call on him. Number two. You'll need a touch from heaven. Amen. The Bible says that the angel began to even cook bread for Elijah. <laughs> say what? Oh, hold on. They say they can't. A touch from heaven. I, see, I saved that one for you because y'all have y'all noticed that I've been walking around a lot. Has anybody seen a wheelchair with me today? Uh -uh. Would you know I used to have one? Where's the wheelchair? Say I had an overdose because I got I used to traffic drugs. I was a drug mule. And I remember being in a car, and I said, I ain't going back to prison. Police come in as a setup. As soon as I got out, I went like a dog, returned right back to his vomit. As soon as they released me, I got out, went, got some money, came right back, got dope, and the police followed me all the way to North Carolina, right back all the way to Florida, mm. riding in the back. Mm. Yep, we knew he would. So you got a choice, either be a dog, return back to your vomit, or you go to where God has for you. God's got something for you. He said, I have a future for you. 
I got a hope for you. I got plans for you. And I promise his plan is better than our plan. Come on. Our plan got us here. God got something for you. Come on. Y'all will get me sideways out here. Hallelujah. You'll need a touch from heaven. As I told you, I was supposed to be in a wheelchair. I don't want to miss that. Hallelujah. I was crippled. They told me I'd never walk again because I took 270 Roxy's. I took 60 Oxycontin. I was 240 Roxy's, which is Oxycontin's. And it ain't no matter what I took. I took enough to kill five horses. I had a whole supply that I'm supposed to supply Gastonia with. And then the police got in behind me. So I, I heard a voice. It wasn't a voice of God. You got to be careful what voice is talking yeah. to you. Yes. Because hear me, the, the devil don't have pitchforks on his head. Talking hey. about, look, he ain't coming to say, I'm going to drag you to hell. Right. If that's what he's going to say, then you would say, heck no. Yeah. What the heck? Right. Yeah. He came to me as an angel of light. And he said, Jason. And the sad thing was, it was the voice that I talked to every day and I thought it was God. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want to hear me. Drugs will mess you up. Right. I'd been talking to Satan the whole time and had no idea. So when he came in that car and the police were behind me, he gave me a great plan. Swallow everything. Swallow everything. And then tell them when you get to the hospital that you swallowed a bunch of drugs and you need your stomach pumped out. I said, that's a plan. I never woke up. They said I was dead for 28 minutes. Yes, I said 28 minutes. Mm -hmm. When I woke up, my legs couldn't feel my legs. I begged God to kill me. I had cussed God for everything he was worth because I couldn't understand a God that would leave me paralyzed. It was like a light bulb should have come on that he saved you from hell, idiot. But I didn't register in my mind because I wanted to know where my Roxy's were that was in my pocket. And if I'm paralyzed, at least give me something to get high on. Oh, you don't want to talk to me. That's how far you can go. I sit in that wheelchair for nine months and I was a drug dealer. I wasn't no nickel and dime, quarter pounder. I wasn't your street drug dealer. I lived in West Palm Beach and I pushed it out and I lived on a little island over there at Riviera Beach. I didn't do nothing but just push hamster cages, slam full of dope. Thought I was somebody. I wasn't nobody. A fool is only wise in his own eyes. Yeah. I sit there in that wheelchair, Jeremy, and God taught me a thing about pride. The Bible says that pride is before the fall. And men of God, I feel. It's a shameful thing, my sister, to have your mama walk you and push you into a bathroom and pick you up and set you on the toilet. Your stepdaddy to sit you down in a bathtub because you can't even wipe your own butt. You don't want to talk to me. God got a way of humbling you. Yeah. That's why the Bible says choose this day. Yeah. You ain't got to go them dirt roads. I got a road, son. And I paved the way. And if you go with me, every devil in hell will get out your way, but you're going to have to follow me. Amen. I laid there for nine months paralyzed. Doctors say you'll never walk again. Mm. Everybody gave up on me. Mama threw everything I had out. Didn't know, want not, you ever had your family don't even want to see you? Mm. Yeah. And rightfully so. Because I would have stole from them, lied to them. And they got sick and tired of being sick and tired of me. But I wasn't sick and tired yet. So just like God does sometimes, he'll allow you to lay straight on your back. So the only way you can do is look up. And as I looked up, I began to call on God and cuss him and everything else. And then my grandma, praise God for it, she loved the Lord. Some of us wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Mama and Mama's prayers. Come on, somebody, give Mama a, a hand clap for praying all that through. My grandma was my last lifeline. I'm about to wrap this up. And she took me home with her. And she started telling me, she said, if you're going to live here, you ain't got nowhere else to go. You're going to live here, you're going to church. i like, God, I'd rather go to prison. <laughs> And I sat in the back of that <clears throat> church because I had to. <clears throat> Preacher was preaching. Pastor Kerry was preaching one day, and he's preaching on a man named Judas. I didn't know the Bible, boys. I didn't know your Noahs and your Moses. I didn't know that. I knew nickels and dimes and quarter pounds. That's all I knew. <laughs> Sitting in there, and he starts talking about, and Jesus, we ain't never had nothing in common until this day at church. And he started preaching about Judas. And then he started talking about how this man had betrayed him. And I had a whole bunch of people tell on me. Hallelujah. I said, hold up. Me and Jesus got something in common. 
They turned on me too, Jesus. They, they can't even trust them. They're snakes. I know what you mean, Jesus. We, we in the back, we having a conversation. For the first time in my life, I'm talking to Jesus. And I'm telling him, I know what it feels like for everybody to turn their back on you. And as the preacher got to preaching and he starts talking about the Judas. And I realized that I wouldn't, I didn't have much as in common with Jesus as I did with Judas. By the time he got done preaching, David, I said, I am Judas. I put them nails in your hands. I put them nails in your feet. I said, I don't know God, but I know one thing. I ain't leaving this church unless I got you in my heart. Boys, I, I didn't leave that church until Jesus got a hold of me. I gave my life to the Lord that day, but it didn't. A light bulb and families listen to me because they give their life to the Lord. They lied to you that everything's perfect, skittles and rainbows and unicorn farts. They lied. Yeah. I gave my life to Jesus, and I went home and I smoked weed, and I started reading my Bible for the first time in my life. I had a forty ounce Budweiser and a, and a joint in my head, a year. Of, and reading, I was like, man, do you believe MF and Jesus did this and did this? And everybody going. <laughs> I can only imagine my daddy sitting there like, I know, I know you give up on him. I know he looks like trash, but he's mine. <laughs> I know he don't look like much, but I'm going to do something in him that none of y'all can do for him. And I know he cusses Ooh. like a sailor. And I know he's a drug addict. And I know he's a dope. But you watch out. I'm going to make a preacher man out of that boy. God kept on pushing me and pursuing me when I didn't even know what I was doing. Come on. And as I read that Bible on the run for three years, hiding from the police, because I knew I had 25 years coming, and eventually they got me. God began to move in and change things in my life. And boys, that journey got too hard. There was many times I tried to kill myself, but God wouldn't let me. Because God had plans for me. There's many of you today that they try to kill you in the streets. There's many times that you've been killing yourself slowly. But God ain't let it. He can ain't let it kill you. The drunk driver should have killed you. The, the accident should have killed you. All these things should have killed you. But God, somehow or another, got us here today. And God brought this crazy preacher from York, South Carolina to tell you that God ain't done. You hear me? God ain't done. You should have lost your rabbit mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The third thing you'll need is a fresh word from heaven. The third thing you'll need on your journey is a fresh word from heaven. The Bible says that Elijah was so tired. When you're tired, weak, and you feel aggravated, everybody walking on eggshells at you, there's a good possibility, and I about guaranteed if I was a betting man, that you ain't ate none that week. And I ain't talking about no food hamburgers. Man can't live off bread alone. Elijah had done got tired. Jeremy, I can't prove it, but I believe he got out of his word because something got in his head. And as Elijah laid down there, the angel come and said, Arise and eat. Men of God, I'm telling you right now, God is telling every one of you, arise. Yes. It's time. Time is drawing nigh. It ain't no more games. Every time they come out of rehab, understand something. This happens. I have to tell you this. Parents, if you're here with your son, I don't care. If they leave here and they go back to dope, call the police on them. On that drug dealer too. You'll save their life. Amen. I got to go bury one of my friends in a couple of days. Amen. See, when you come out of drug addiction, your tolerance drops all the way down. And like a dog, we want to return back to our vomit. But when we return back, you don't understand. These drug dealers now ain't the way we used to be when we was kids. They ain't smoking dope, jumping rope, and eating food line, cantaloupe. They trying to kill you. Yeah. They trying to kill you. And when you come out of something like that and you go back into it, most of them end up dead. I'm telling you that to warn you. Because I know that God has a plan for you. If God can do it for me, he can do it for you. There's no excuses. I'm like Paul. I am the chief sinner. You're looking at him. And if God can do it, and many of you, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but i got to fix this real quick. If you've ever considered yourself trash, if you ever consider yourself worthless, 
Listen to me real close. My pastor Brian T, he told me this. He said, I told him, he said, he said, why don't you think God looks after you? I said, because God looks at the fools and babies. Mm -hmm. He said, who told you that? I said, you know, I'm just talking, man. He said, words are powerful, boy. Don't talk like that. Okay. I said, well, Brian, it's like this, bro. The other day, I'm old trying to park trash, boy, across. I, I come from nothing, man. And that's why God uses me, because he gets all the glory. They know that little old trashy boy couldn't have done nothing. He said, hold on for a minute. He said, hold on, Jason. Let's just go throw all these Bibles away then. I said, say what? He said, you said this, this Bible's a lie. That's what you just told me. I said, I didn't say that. He said, oh, yeah, that's what you just told me. I said, Brian, I told you that, God, that I'm trash. How did I say that the Bible's a lie? He said, because the Bible said that he made you in his image. Come on. He said, I ain't never read one time where God made a piece of trash. Come on. God said, I made them in my image. And he even says that they were wonderfully made. He even says that you're the apple of his eye, Jason. So if you believe that, you believe a lie. And we might as well throw the Bible away. Come on. Come on. Mm. Put my head down and I'm repenting. So I want to tell every man of God here today, God ain't never made trash. He's only made treasure. We just done some trashy things. Yeah. And it's up to us today to say, we ain't going back. Men of God holler right now, I'm not going back. Come on, somebody say it like you mean it. I ain't going back. If somebody's sitting next to you and he ain't saying nothing, give him a karate chop and tell him, you ain't me. Hallelujah. The fourth thing you'll need, the fourth thing you'll need, and this is my final one. This is it. Elijah had lost his way. I know because he was sitting in a cave in the dark wanting to commit suicide. And the Bible says this, that he needed a fresh word. And the fresh word is this. He said, also, you need my instructions. How many of you want to know what God has for you? Can I tell you that he knows the plans he has for you? He said, I have plans for you to prosper. That means not lagging. And he says, I made your head, the head, and not the tail. Do I got a brother of three or ten in here right now that can say, well, I've been feeling like the tail for a long time. I've been dragging. Stand to your feet, men of God. Today, you ain't got to drag no more. God wants to make you the head of your household. He wants you to make the son when you come home to your mom and daddy and they say, I don't care what he did. See, mom and daddy don't care what you did. We don't care if you're the prodigal son. We just want you to come home. And we want you to come home in peace and love and kindness. We don't want to see you in body bags. God brought this crazy preacher down here because I know there's soldiers here. I see what your mama sees. I see what your daddy sees because I see out of my daddy's eyes. Boy, God got plans for you. It's up to you to take it. You got to make up your mind. Right now, I'm in a process. Say, I'm in a process. I'm in a process, I'm in a process that I can't go past. Listen to me. I know you want to say, God, here's the pen. Write a new chapter. Man of God, you hear me in the back. If you can take the pen, God, and write something new, I'm tired of being right here. Let's go ahead and go to the next chapter. And you will miss everything that God has for you. Men, it's the fire. Brother, it's the fire that made you who you are. You know why God cuts a fire on you and cuts pressure on you? He's going to burn out every impurity out of you. He don't want you to go back. He wants to give you things that he has for you, a future for you. I lost my daughter for three years behind in prison when I got out. They told me your daughter's scared of you, some drug dealer. She don't want to be around you. You know what? God restored everything. A man that couldn't read and write now wrote a book. A man that couldn't even wake up without cocaine or, or heroin in his veins. Now I wake up with my wife and we go get that word of God. And I sit on the front porch with her and we worship him. And I looked through God's eyes and I said, God, only you could do this because there was a time I'd wake up in places 
that I was ashamed to wake up in. Beer bottles laying everywhere, smelling like stagnated cigarettes, laying in bed with women you had no business with. Come on. Some of you got soul ties in here right now, you need to cut them off. God's in this place, boys. He showed up and he's in your heart right now. That's God messing with you. It ain't Pastor Jason. It's God. And what he's doing right now, he's saying, soldier, rise up. They don't love you like he does. They don't, do they, Jeremy? Jeremy, raise your hand. I'm going to close here. Jeremy, right here, right here in the front. Raise your hand, son. I poured in this young man since I started this ministry. When he first came in my church, they called him the, the chef of York County. He was the one that cooked all the meth. He supplied the whole place. And I watched God turn that boy around from nothing. Come on. Come on. Nothing. He pulled up an old raggedy truck, holes in his windows, didn't even cut any road, didn't even have, didn't even have windshields. But the boy was coming to church. And he told me, he said, I come here and, and I had a little bit of dope in my pocket. I couldn't see wasting it, so I did it. I said, that's all right. I'm glad you came. Amen. See, every time you run them off, you run them somewhere else. Amen. What arms are you running your people to? See, I run them toward Jesus. And I have the hands of God. And I tell them, look, Jeremy, I know God can do it for you, son. Come on. He said, they're trying to take my son. I'm losing it. I need something different. I said, son, all you got to do is surrender. Yeah. It's that easy. Grab his hand and don't let loose. That young man now, I can sit here and brag on him forever. Family, children, home. The second home now. Two or three cars that I know that he's done. God is good to his children. But he ain't good to baby's kids. Choose this day who you'll serve. 